don't judge me when it comes to my neck because I just didn't feel like putting foundation. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is Anna here and be prepared. Today's video is definitely going to be a long one. As you can tell by the title above or below, I'm going to be sharing with you a few things that I think you should know about Ulta Beauty should you be interested in applying. If you do find what I share in this video helpful, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and also hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos from me in the future. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. So there is... Ah, that's a lot. <laughs> okay. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to share with you my history with Ulta. That way you guys can find what I say a little more credible. However, I am no longer with the company and this is due to relocation, sadly. For those of you who are watching this video and work at Ulta currently, if anything that I share in this video is no longer correct or intact, please don't hesitate to clarify in the comments below. That way the viewers here have the most accurate information. I have worked at Ulta for several years and I spent the longest duration of my time there as a prestige sales manager. I actually started with the company as a temporary stock associate and my responsibility was to prep the store for grand opening. And from there, I would basically keep it moving because it was a seasonal position. Thankfully, I was given the opportunity to stay. I had then become a beauty advisor and eventually a prestige beauty advisor, a lead cashier, then the prestige sales manager. And I also had the lovely experience of standing in as an acting general manager. So as the prestige manager, I was responsible for the sales of all things high-end. So this included cosmetics, skincare, and fragrance. It also included training implementation for guest servicing and product knowledge. I did interviewing, hiring, onboarding, partnering with brand representatives, and partnering directly with the salon manager and the estheticians, as well as the rest of management because collaboration is such a big deal to Ulta. I'm not gonna get into all of that, of course. I also hosted the events and I ran the social media pages on Facebook and Instagram. There are tons of other things that I did, but we'll just keep it at that. The first thing that I'm going to share with you today are the positions. Now, I just wanna put it out there. I'm only going to be talking about the positions that are part-time and do not require a license. So I'm gonna dive a little bit into a portion of what should be in scheduling just because I think it's important that you know now. As a part-time employee, you are able to be scheduled up to 28 hours and you can have a minimum of five hours in a week. This is contingent on many factors, so I don't want anybody to start freaking out now. It could be your availability, the payroll that's allotted, how sales are going for the week, and of course, your productivity. But going into the positions, the first position that I'll share with you is a beauty advisor because it's definitely a baseline for the other positions that I'll be sharing today. So as a beauty advisor, you are likely to do everything. And when I say that, that's guest servicing. So you're helping on the sales floor, you're helping the shade matches, recommending product, you're obviously sharing the promotions that are happening in store, you're handing out bags, you're also helping with the cleanliness of the store. You can even find yourself ringing up at the cash wrap. You'll also be helping with stocking items, whether or not that's on a designated shipment day and helping with planograms. The next position that I'm gonna share with you is a prestige beauty advisor. As a prestige beauty advisor, you're basically doing what a beauty advisor does, but you are going to be catered more towards the high-end cosmetics. So say for instance, a guest needs a shade match and they are in the drugstore section and another guest needs a shade match and they are in the prestige section. The beauty advisor would likely go and help the guest that is in mass or drugstore and you would then be helping the guest that is in the prestige area. So again, the cleaning and stocking and all of the other things that I shared as a beauty advisor, you're still gonna be doing that as a prestige beauty advisor, but you're just catered more towards the area of prestige because you do have a higher skill level when it comes to cosmetics and the art of selling it. The last position that I have is a lead cashier. So as a lead cashier, your main duty is to ring guests up at the cash wrap. And as a lead cashier, you value loyalty life cycle, so the Ulta rewards points, and of course, the credit cards. You're also maintaining the cleanliness of the cash wrap, making sure the bags are stocked, there are gift cards. You also have the ability to authorize returns over a certain amount or to price override certain products. But overall, that's the basic responsibilities of a lead cashier. So the next thing that we're gonna talk about are discounts. 
I miss the discount, trust me. So you receive a 20% off retail product discount and you also get a 50% off salon service discount. When it comes to the discount on products, the cool thing is you are able to stack that on already discounted items like clearance, including ongoing sales. Throughout the year though, another cool thing is that certain brands will offer you additional discounts to your associate discount. So that's always a really fun one during Christmas time. Sometimes you'll get like an extra 10% off from Anastasia that you can stack on top of your employee discount or an extra 20% off of Estee Lauder. But that is one of the amazing perks of working at Ulta. A few years ago, they were working on allowing us to use our discount online. It's still something that never happened before I left. So hopefully that's something that will change in the near future for those of you who are currently employed or soon to be. Now, next thing is dress code. Dress code has changed tremendously since I had originally started with the company. So two months ago when I was with the company, the current dress code was that you were able to wear black, white, magenta, gray, orange, and pink. And the cool thing about it is you're able to wear variations of those colors. So you can wear a bright pink or a blush, you could wear a dark gray or a light gray, which is really nice because for me, certain colors just don't work with my skin tone. In addition to that, you are now able to wear patterns. So you can wear patterns of these colors together. And that is such an amazing thing. And I will tell you that when that changed, my wardrobe just exploded with a bunch of new clothes because I was given the opportunity to just have freedom when it came to dressing up for work. The next thing that gets even better is you are able to wear it on both tops and bottoms. So if you had a striped shirt and it came with a striped skirt or striped pants, you could then wear it on top and bottom, which is super cool. And when it comes to shoes, as long as it's professional, it's not like flip flops or no sneakers, you are able to wear any color shoe. Yeah, any color shoe. I'm pretty sure it's any color shoe. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. The number one thing that I would trust to everybody is you are not allowed to wear jeans. So when it comes to wearing jeans, it's just a flat out no-no. Even if you wear something to cover up your jean pockets, you're wearing jeans. You're able to wear leggings. You just have to make sure that your butt is covered. Other than that, you can wear like slacks. And there are so many pants on the market that are very, very cute. They're just a little bit more professional than jeans. So no jeans. You also are able to have tattoos and piercings as long as they are tasteful. You need to make sure that you come to work with your makeup done and your hair done. And when I say makeup or hair done, you don't need to come to work with even like the makeup that I have. You, you just need to look professional and presentable. And the final thing is, is if it's not normal operating hours in the store, you are able to wear anything that is comfortable for you. So if you wanna come in with jeans and, you know, sweatpants and a sweatshirt, you're able to do that because the store isn't operating. Therefore, there are no guests in the store. Therefore, there is no need for you to wear makeup and be an actual dress code. All right, training. This is something that people would definitely ask about in an interview is if they get trained on how to do certain things. And you're actually required to watch three training videos a week. So these could go over practices, policies, products, so no, you don't need to know everything. That was just one thing that I always had employees tell me was, you know so much and I wanna be at a level where I know as much as you do. And the reality of it is I have learned it over time. I've learned it from experiences that guests have brought to my attention. I've learned from my coworkers. I've learned from the internet and I've learned from YouTube. I've learned from watching first impression videos. You also have access to an iPad and a salon computer at all times throughout the day in which you can do research, even if it's in that moment. If a guest comes up to you and they ask you a question that you don't know, you can also bounce off of the other employees and ask them questions. Um, but really one quick important thing, you will succeed in what you're passionate about. And honestly, I learned so much along the way because I was also passionate about it and I took the time out of my day to learn more, even outside of work. Now, no one's gonna force you to do that because you're not gonna be on payroll when you're at home watching Jaclyn Hill's videos. But it is true, you will learn more outside of work 
and as long as you continue to further your knowledge. The last way that you can receive training is through brand partner visits. So throughout the year, certain brands will stop in your store and if you're selected for training, you'll be able to come in and learn more about products and launches that are coming up. And during that time, you're also able to receive gratis. And now I'm gonna jump into gratis just as a whole. And gratis is basically free product in exchange of receiving training. And this can range from small little fragrance sample sizes that you can get in magazines to full on palettes that haven't even been released yet. So that's a really awesome way that you can learn more about product is by receiving gratis. And again, just another way that Ulta gives you the opportunity to learn and grow. Now, moving on to scheduling. So when it comes to scheduling, the schedule is actually done two weeks out and you will have access to your schedule via the Work Jam app. But the cool thing is, is the Work Jam app allows you to not only see your schedule, but to drop shifts, pick them up and also communicate with your store, your district, and get all of the communications from what's happening in the company. But that's pretty much it for scheduling. All right, so now we are gonna move into part two of this video, and this is going to go over the application and the interview process. So I have five tips when it comes to the application. The first being apply online because Ulta does not do paper applications. Obviously, now that you know a little bit more about the positions, and if I didn't explain the positions well enough to you, you can find them online, but of course you're going to want to apply. The next thing is to call two to three days after applying. I would highly suggest avoid calling on the weekends because the weekends are the busiest time. Hey, my name is so-and-so. I put an application for this day as a beauty advisor or a prestige beauty advisor or a lead cashier. You'd be surprised at the people that would call and they didn't know the position that they had applied for. <laughs> And I just wanted to check on the status of my application, when is the soonest I can go come in for an interview or what time works best for you, blah, 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 blah. The fourth is to go in in person and introduce yourself to a manager and bring in a business card or a resume. And this might sound like trying too hard. I remember for my first job ever, it was at Hollister and I was looking at how to get the job at Hollister and a lot of people were like, well, you don't want to go in wearing all Hollister clothes because that makes you look like you're trying and because that makes you look like you're trying too hard. You're trying to get the job, so try hard. <laughs> I'm not kidding. The fifth, obviously, is to then wait for a call back. Moving into the interview. I highly suggest, number one, showing up 15 minutes early, and this is just the basic rule of thumb when it comes to an interview. Number two is, again, to bring your resume or a business card. Number three, dress in all black attire and have your makeup and your hair done. Basically look presentable. It doesn't necessarily have to be black. You don't have to come in with a crazy black smoky eye and you don't have to do all of that. Just come in looking professional. The reason I say black despite the update of the dress code is black is just classic and professional, but you do you. Number four is to share something interesting and different about you. I have done a ton of interviews where they're like, oh, I love makeup and yeah, well, I love makeup and I love makeup. And there's nothing wrong with saying that. And of course, when it comes to trying hard, yes, you love makeup. And I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that. But I remember when I did my interview, I shared that I was from Hawaii and everybody's like, oh, you're from Hawaii. And it just came this thing where like everybody remembered I was the girl that was from Hawaii. And I'm proud of that at the end of the day, but it gave them something to remember. Just a little tip, and again, this is just, it shows a more personal side to you. Number five is to always ask questions. And I would highly suggest going in with questions written down on a notebook, and as far as bringing in a notebook, that is actually my next tip, but always have questions. Number six is to bring in a notebook and take notes when the interviewer answers questions and shares other important information. Number seven, be prepared, this one's gonna be a mouthful, be prepared to give examples for questions that require you to share an experience that may have not occurred for you. So we'll get back to that one when I share the questions that I ask during an interview. Number eight is for all of you lucky dogs out there. 
I highly suggest bringing in a few forms of ID in the situation where you do get hired on the spot. That way they can onboard you immediately. So this would include your social security card, your birth certificate, as well as your driver's license. And please keep this in mind for when you are applying for this job because I don't know when you're watching this. I don't know if you're thinking about applying at Ulta now or if it's gonna be two weeks from now, but you can get all of this stuff prepared for when you are offered a job if you need to order these things now. But that does include my tips for the interview. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move into the questions. So when it comes to the questions, <laughs> mine may be a little bit more complex than the questions that you see on YouTube currently, but I will guarantee you that the questions that I will ask will really pick at your brain based on the core values of what Ulta Beauty stands for. Number one, what are three products you would recommend to a guest with dry skin, oily skin, or combination skin? Now, I ask this question because it shows your knowledge on products, whether it is cosmetics or skincare, or obviously this could even turn into a hair care question. What I do is I actually change the skin type for each person that is interviewing. Number two. Do you have experience with credit cards and rewards programs? Because both of these factors do drive the business. If you don't have any experience with these, that is fine. I think it's just important for you to share what the value of these two things are when it comes to driving the business. The third one is give me a time when you and Appear had a misunderstanding and how you were able to resolve it. So this comes down to culture because culture in the workplace at Ulta is huge. And referring back to number seven, if you have never had like a misunderstanding, I've had tons of people say that like, oh, like I don't like drama. I've never had problems with people. And you know, I, if that's true, I'm very, very glad, but I wanna know how you'd be able to resolve that issue. Number four, it's gonna be similar, but, but this time it's with a guest. So give a time when you and a guest had a misunderstanding and how you're able to resolve that. Number five, what will Ulta do for your future? So this is the perfect opportunity for you to share if you wanna be a cosmetologist or an esthetician because Ulta will support you in that. Number six, what will be your biggest area of opportunity? Is it going to be skincare? Is it gonna be selling credit cards? Is it going to be signing people up for rewards. That way your future employer knows how they can help you. Number seven is what strength will help you succeed here. So maybe you can kill it with credit cards. Maybe you do makeup as a side gig so you'll be really comfortable with putting makeup on, all that stuff. Number eight, where do you currently get your hair, nails, and skin services done? So again, when we're talking about building the team for Ulta, this goes along with recruiting in other areas of the business. So that is one that we do ask. Number nine, who is the most influential person in your life and why? And this is actually a fun question that I ask. So again, this, this probably will not even be asked by the person that's going to be interviewing you. But I really like asking this question because it shows me how you look up to a certain person. What about them you value? Number 10, what are your favorite brands? So the last two questions were a little bit more on like the fun side and didn't really require you to dig deep. But for the most part, the other questions did. That concludes my questions. All right, everybody. Well, that is it for this crazy long video. So if you stuck around for the entire thing, I just wanna say thank you so much. If you're curious and you're just watching this, thank you. But for those of you who are actually interested in working with the company, I wish you the best of luck. And if you do apply and you get the job and you find that these tips were helpful for you, please drop a comment below and share that you got the job. So that way we can celebrate with you. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content from me in the future and also like this video if you found anything helpful. But I will see you in the next one. Bye.